Greetings, friend. This is the third part of my Almost Lock Set tutorial series. In this one, I'm going to talk to you about Almost Lock Set XZ Rule Type 2. Click on the link below if you want to try any of these puzzles yourself. And with that, it's solving time. So for my first example, I wanted to use what I call the top year example. If you Google Almost Lock Sets and you're looking for a website, uh, this top year one will pop up T-A-U-P-I-E-R. And the first example, it actually talks about an Almost Lock Set. It's this diagram. Um, it's a type one, but I'm going to show you this is actually a type two. So let's talk about Almost Lock Sets first of all. If you remember our definition, Almost Lock Set is you have you know an n you have a number of cells in this case two cells and you have an, an additional candidate so for two cells you'd have three candidates n plus one so let's go right here you see how there's a one five and seven so two cells with three different candidates so that's an almost lock set and then in the top here example he chooses this these four cells you see one three seven and nine so there's four different candidates in three cells so this is another almost lock set. And if you remember the almost lock set XZ rule, what we're doing is we want to have at least two candidates that uh, will see each other. And so if you look across here, you might notice that all the sevens see each other and then all the ones see each other. See how they're in all the same row in the same row? So when you have both uh, common candidates and they're called restricted common candidates, uh, where they just see they see all of the other instances in the other lock set this is a type 2 almost lock set and it, and it accomplishes the type 2 almost lock set xz rule and so the difference is with a type 1 you'd have one restricted common candidate so like the ones would be restricted and then you'd have another candidate uh, that is not restricted but it's common and then you would be able to eliminate a cell, you need to eliminate that can for me so that sees uh, all those instances. In this case, you have two restricted common candidates. So the one, all the ones see each other and all the seven see each other in this example. So it's a little bit different. Another thing I want to keep in mind is this is a, a solve has been started here. So if you try to solve this, you might notice there's going to be some extra candidates in here that had already been eliminated. Like there's going to be a two right there. It's already eliminated. The eights are already eliminated right here. I just want to throw that out there because if you think, you know, that you're starting off right off the bat, you know, and see how the six and the three were, were solved as well. So let's see how this works. Two restricted con candidates. What it says is one of these con restricted con candidates has to be in one of the almost lock sets. And then the other restricted con candidate has to be in the other almost lock set they both can't be in the same one and you can't exclude either one of them from both of these lock sets and here's why let's say right here if you're going to solve this for a one you see how the ones see each other if you put a one right here what happens you put a one right there you eliminate a one from here you eliminate a one from right here right and then now what you have is a three seven nine they could triple in the orange well three seven nine they could triple one of these sevens now would eliminate this seven right here and you'd see you have a five that has to go in two spots so that's impossible so that's why you can't solve for something outside of the cell now conversely let's look at you know like we said does a seven could the seven and the one both be in this one? And it's going to be pretty obvious that the answer is no. You put the seven and the one right here. You eliminate all those sevens and you eliminate the one. And you see how you have a three nine. It has to be in three cells. So you can't put them both in the same almost lock set. And then the last situation we're going to talk about here is, well, can you remove them? And I already kind of showed you why you can't remove them. If you put a five, see how this one wouldn't even work. Because it'd be a five to five. Well, let's go over here. If you got rid of the one and the seven, you'd have a three nine. There's not enough candidates to fill it in. So you have to have the seven and one. You have to have the one and the other. What does this mean for us elimination wise? What it means is you can eliminate any of uh, that candidate that sees both of these, right? So you see this one and this one right here. You can eliminate 
the one from right there. You can also eliminate the one from right here. In the top of your example, he doesn't talk about this one, but you can eliminate that one. Uh, if there's any other ones across row six, you can eliminate them. If there's any other sevens along row five, you can eliminate those as well. So that's how the almost lock set uh, XZ rule type two works. Two restricted common candidates. All right, let's move on to our next example. Okay, for our next example, this is a puzzle I've solved before, Rotational Flow by Keen Lux. Awesome puzzle. You want, I will put a link to this puzzle at the end, and you can go check that out. It's a great solve, and I do use an almost lock set, and that's the intended logic for this. Uh, what's nice is this is an almost lock set type 2. And what's, when you have a setter like Keen Lux that makes a puzzle, they put in Telegraph kind of where they want you to look. So if you look right here, Column one and column nine are kind of screaming out at you because the cells that are missing are the same rows, rows three, five, and seven, and they're almost the same candidate. So like right here, you got a one, two, four missing, and can't eliminate it out. And then over here, you got a one, two, three missing. So I immediately saw that when I tried to solve this puzzle. You got the one right there, so you can eliminate this one. Now, this is going to be the basis for our almost lock set. Okay, so let's look at what we just did here. And now, telegraphing wise, what rows do we want to focus on that kind of interact with these columns and the cells we just filled in? If you notice, there's extra digits in rows three and seven. So, Keen Lux is begging you to kind of look and study those cells. So, let's, let's cut across here. You got a five, six, seven, eight. So, it'd be a one, two, three, four, and a nine across the top. And which one of these can we eliminate? You got a 349 right there. So you can eliminate that 349. And then right here, 349. I can't eliminate anything else there. Okay. And then come down here. What are we missing? You know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And you'll notice uh, you can't eliminate anything there. You have a 3, 4, 5 right there. You can eliminate those. And you got a 1 right here. Okay, now we can form two almost lock sets. You know that these cells are going to be a part of it because they kind of see up here in row three already. But you probably also notice there's a one, two in both of these. And so what are the common candidates that they have? Ones and twos. But what are the restricted common candidates? And that's what I'm about to show you. Let's look at this almost lock set first in the blue. And you can see it's the can it's one, two, three, and four, and they're in three cells. So that's an almost lock set. It's cool, a long row seven. Now let's look up here. Also, one, two, three, and four in three cells. So this is another almost lock set. But now can you see what are the restricted common candidates in these two almost lock sets? There's always got to be some interaction between them. Well, if you'll notice, the fours are limited to column one. They're not anywhere else in the almost lock set. Okay. And then the threes are limited to column nine. They're not anywhere else in the almost lock set. So what that means by the type two rule, a four has to be in one of these almost lock sets and a three has to be in the other. So we can eliminate the fours and threes from anywhere else along columns one and nine, respectively. And so... To prove my point, a three needs to be either here or here, right? So what happens if you put a three right there? You put a three in that spot right there. Get my coloring out of the way. Then what you'd see is you're going to run out of candidates to fill in these the rest of these sets. You get a one, two, and a one, two right there. So that would have to be a four. And then this couldn't be a four. And now you have a one, two, and three spot. Doesn't work, right? So we know we can eliminate that three. This has to be a two. Same thing right here. If you try to solve this for four, you're going to run out of spots again. Because that's the way it works. Because the restricted common can't see each other and they're restricted to the almost locked set, you need at least one of those to kind of fill the set after you make the solve. And so in this case, you have a one, two, and a one, two. So this would have to be a three up here. And this can be a three. So you have a one, two across three uh, cells in row seven. It doesn't work. So that's why you can eliminate that four. 
Cool. And so once you eliminate the three from right here, and then you can eliminate the four and now the two, and you saw that for one, this puzzle starts to fall apart. Very cool. This is an, an easier one, I'd say, to find because of the way Keen Lux telegraphed this beautifully in rotational flow. So let's move on to our third and final example. And I'm excited because it's a puzzle you have not seen before. And before I do that, don't forget to subscribe to Smart Hobby so you don't miss any new content. I put out a new video every Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday, and I'm always trying to help you transform a passing interest in Sudoku into a fun and enjoyable hobby. Now let's move on to that third example. All right, our third example, this is a puzzle called Carousels. It's by Shy. And it was featured and solved on a few other channels previously. Um, Shy's intended logic included an almost lock set type two. And I'm going to show you that intended logic right now. This is a really fun puzzle. I got a link below. You want to try it out. Okay. First, start looking at the threes. You have a three here, here, and here, right? So you can solve this for a three. And then a three here, here, and here. You can solve this for a three. And then you can solve a three right there. And then you can solve a three right there. And you should be able to finish out all the threes. So that's kind of a key you need to be able to solve all the threes before you can move on and start looking for the almost lock set after this point it's going to be a little tough to make any more progress in the puzzle but we can and the way we can is you want to kind of focus on rows that seem to have a lot of the same digits and so let's look at row two and let's look at row eight see how there's a six seven eight and a three three seven eight nine those are pretty close let's come across here what can be in row two, you can have one, two, four, five, nine, and get rid of that two, four. Get rid of that one, two, four, and you can get rid of uh, one, two right there, and you can get rid of the one and the nine right there. Okay. Now let's look at row eight. What can we put here? One, two, four, five, six. One, two, four, five, and six. All right, let's start making some eliminations here. Um, get rid of the one and two right there because of this one and two. One, two, four right here. And then you got a two and a four. Right there. One, two, four, five, six. You got a six right there. You can eliminate. Okay. Now looking at this, you're like, oh, there's really not much here. Where is there? Do we have almost lock sets? You probably the key you might focus on are these two cells. They're pretty limited. You see how there's a nine, a six, or the fives right there. Okay. You might also see, well, hey, the fours are only limited to column two. And then the ones limited to column eight in these two rows so let's check this out if you look right here is this an almost lock set with one four five nine yep three cells four different candidates almost lock set let's look right here is this an almost lock set one four five six yep three cells four candidates almost lock set now do we have two restricted common candidates and the answer is yes. The fours are restricted to column two, right? There's no other fours anywhere else in the ALSs. So the fours, both fours see each other. And then the ones also see each other, right? And there's no other ones in these almost locked sets. So what we have here is an almost locked set, ALS XZ, type two, that we can use to start solving this puzzle. So what it means is, let's look at the ones first. Because the ones, got to be here or here then that means those can't be a one and you have a one coming across row six where's the only place left for a one here in block six it's got to be right there right so you can solve for that for a one and you can start making some progress likewise let's look over here the fours have to be in one of these two spots in column two so four can't be in either of those two spots 
You have these two fours coming across. So where can a four be here in block four? It has to be right there. And once you solve that, the rest of the puzzle will start falling apart. So this is what Shia intended when she made carousels. And it's very cool, and it's a great application of the almost lock set. Also telegraphed pretty well with the way these givens are put in the grid. Now, bonus, if you're still sticking around here, this puzzle can also be solved using set. And so if you wanted to try to solve this using set, you can go right ahead. It has a pretty uh, straightforward solution. My hint to you is you'd want to line up all the low digits in one of your sets and all the high digits in one of your other sets. Uh, Shai told me that she didn't like this puzzle once she found out that there is a way to bypass it using set. And so she made another version of carousels that's a little bit harder and you can't use set on it to, to solve it. But I want to throw that out there and go try it out for yourself. So check out these other videos from my Sudoku Advanced Tutorial playlist on something you may not be that familiar with. Also, this great puzzle by Keenlux, Rotational Flow. See how I solved it all the way through. Don't forget to buy me a coffee link. Your support really helps me out. I want to thank all the setters who let me feature their puzzles on my channel. Thank you so much for watching.